Today on Investigate TV Plus, Americans are traveling outside the U.S. seeking affordable health care, but the journey does carry risks. I'm Lee Zurich. And I'm Tisha Powell. We examine medical tourism and have expert advice on the hazards you need to consider before taking a trip. You can see where the birds hit. Um, it wasn't all that pleasant. Planes hitting birds put passenger safety at risk. We dig into the rise in bird strikes and the work to keep planes, people, and wildlife safe. Plus, a special program getting inmates and retired racehorses back on track. Yeah, I was on a dead end road. You know, I was destined to be an old drunk. I was an alcoholic. I was destined to be an old lonely drunk. You know, I've changed you know, a lot, and I think, I think horses have had a lot to do with that. In-depth stories that inform and inspire. You're watching Investigate TV+. Plus. A growing number of Americans are once again traveling internationally to seek medical care. It's called medical tourism, and according to international consulting firm Patients Beyond Borders, it's popular for people seeking more affordable care and those looking to bypass long waits for treatment. The group estimates that in 2020, between 1.4 million and 3 million people went to Mexico to take advantage of inexpensive treatments. That's promising news for the business, but experts warn there are risks. Raul and Lori Valenzuela say they tried everything to lose weight, but when nothing seemed to work, they turned to bariatric sleeve surgery in September of 2018 to try to get their lives back on track. My wife wanted, to, she wanted to do it, and I mean, and you know, I was, I, you know, I was still reluctant because it is Mexico. The couple from Olive Branch, Mississippi, say they couldn't afford the procedure in the United States. According to research in the National Library of Medicine, it can cost up to $25,000 per patient. So taking the advice of friends, the Valenzuelas went across the border into Tijuana, where they say they were able to get both surgeries for around $7,000. Me being as overweight as I was at 278 pounds, is something that, you know, I especially needed to do. Lori's procedure was a success. Perfect, not, not, not a hitch, nothing wrong with her, nothing. But for Raul. Mine was the worst case scenario. The surgery nearly killed him. Less than a week after returning home, his stomach ruptured and he became septic. He also contracted a drug resistant superbug called Pseudomonas. I'm not supposed to be here. It's a risk more and more Americans are taking. These high costs of care and our broken healthcare system are forcing millions and millions of patients to make decisions that they otherwise would not have made. According to Patients Beyond Borders CEO Joseph Woodman, about two million Americans travel internationally for care each year to destinations including Mexico, Brazil, Costa Rica, and India, and that number is growing. Patients Beyond Borders says those patients can save between 20 to 90 percent on medical bills, depending on the procedure and the country. The Journal of the American Pharmacist Association surveyed more than 400 medical tourists in 2020 and found that most, 92 percent, were motivated by money. In the United States, it's all about cost. According to the CDC, the most common procedures include dental care, cosmetic surgery, fertility treatments, organ and tissue transplants, and cancer treatment. I haven't been to a U.S. dentist in 14 years. I've had implants, I've had crowns. It's all very efficient. You gotta go to the right clinic, so. Woodman supports medical tourism and says it can be safe, but patients need to do their homework. He cautions that quality and safety criteria for providers, facilities, drugs, and medical devices are not always consistent across countries and hospitals. It's absolutely imperative, job number one, for patients to do their research and not rely simply on references from friends. You don't want to price shop, for example. You don't want to go to the very least expensive clinic that's offering the least expensive surgeries. There can be a lot of trouble around that as well. The CDC says the most common complications are infection related. They advise not delaying follow-up care if necessary, as early diagnosis and treatment can lead to better outcomes. Obviously, the, 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 the complication that is most dreaded is just death not surviving the incidents. And there have been examples of people who are not board certified doing liposuction and cause life-threatening injuries, right? So there are significant risks. 
Patients Beyond Borders says global accreditation organizations like the Joint Commission International can help Americans find more reliable care overseas. International hospitals accredited by the JCI are held to the same standards as those accredited in the United States. More than 950 hospitals and clinical departments worldwide have earned this recognition, though the CDC cautions that accreditation does not guarantee a positive outcome. For Raul Valenzuela, weight loss surgery was life-changing, but for all the wrong reasons. He spent weeks in a U.S. hospital receiving corrective care and ultimately had to have his stomach removed. To this day, he says staying nourished can be a challenge and painful constant reminders of his near-death experience. If I would have known then what I know now, I would have stayed fat. In June 2023, the CDC issued a travel warning over medical tourism after three people died of a fungal infection linked to cosmetic procedures done in Matamoros, Mexico. Since January of 2023, the CDC has identified 14 suspected, 11 probable, and two confirmed U.S. cases. They also say more than 200 U.S. residents in 25 states could be at risk for the infection, which can appear weeks after the procedure. For those considering medical tourism, the CDC recommends you purchase travel health insurance, get a pre-travel consultation, bring medical records to the treating facility, take updated records home following surgery, and arrange necessary follow-up care prior to the procedure. For more information on JCI accredited hospitals, you can visit www.jointcommissioninternational.org. It's a treasure hunt that starts after an airline mishandles a bag and it's never claimed. Still to come, we take you inside the Alabama megastore where lost luggage is found. But first, bird strikes pose a hazard to both commercial and private aircraft. The engines would have been okay had they just struck one goose but they encountered a flock of geese. We examine the measures allowing birds and aircraft to share the skies safely. You can watch Investigate TV Plus anytime online. Just subscribe to our YouTube channel at Investigate TV. You can catch stories and full episodes. You hear a loud, loud thump, a loud noise. That loud thump is the sound of a bird hitting an aircraft. And according to the Federal Aviation Administration, it's becoming a more common occurrence for pilots. Since the birth of aviation, planes have been competing with birds for airspace. Back in September 1905, Orville Wright wrote in his diary about hitting a flock of birds while flying over a cornfield near Dayton, Ohio. There was no damage to his plane, but modern day aircraft aren't always as lucky. Yeah, the FAA says thousands of bird strikes from both commercial and private aircraft are reported to the agency every year. We go in depth on how birds are compromising air travel safety and the technology and tools in place to prevent a catastrophic collision. A lot of people closing their eyes and trying to text their loved ones. Greg Carfagna was a passenger on American Airlines flight 1958. The Boeing 737 had just taken off from Columbus, Ohio, the morning of April 23, 2023, when Greg heard a loud thud. On the ground, video taken from the campus of The Ohio State University shows flames spewing from the right side of the aircraft. You can see where the birds hit. Um, it wasn't all that pleasant. The FAA says bird strikes are a growing concern due in part to increasing populations of large birds and a trend toward faster and quieter aircraft. Wildlife and, uh, and aircraft don't mix very well. In Florida, Sarasota Bradenton Airport President Rick Piccolo has seen his fair share of bird strikes. In 2019, the airport took a step to improve safety by using a $9 million FAA grant to shrink a pond near the runway that attracted birds. Other ways the FAA is trying to protect aircraft include modifying aircraft flight schedules and using dogs or loud noises to chase birds away. 
We try to reinforce this, you know, daily, um, you know, keep as much wildlife away from the airport as possible. Michael Parento is the wildlife biologist for Bradley Airport in Connecticut. Each day, his crews survey the land on and around the airport looking for threats. Kind of fine tune it to why are we seeing this wildlife here? you know, come up with a reason and then either alter the habitat on the airfield or remove it completely. Airports also work with the federal government to relocate nests and at times even resort to lethal removal for species such as Canada geese. That's because Canada geese can weigh up to 12 pounds and are capable of taking out a jet's engine. The aviation experts we spoke to say flocks of birds are even more dangerous because they can result in multiple strikes. Pilot and aviation expert Jim Rosman says he's experienced two bird strikes in his career. One hit the plane's fuselage and the other hit the plane's nose. He says he barely noticed the strikes until he saw feathers. If multiple birds had been involved, he said it would have been a much different story. The engines would have been okay had they just struck one goose, but they encountered a flock of geese. Rosman is talking about the miracle on the Hudson. Retired airline captain Chesley Sullenberger was inside the cockpit on January 15, 2009, when U.S. Airways Flight 1549 hit a flock of birds so large it took out both engines. Sullenberger landed the aircraft on the Hudson River. Everyone on board survived. The plane's wreckage now sits in an aviation museum in Charlotte, North Carolina, named for Sullenberger. Sullenberger says what happened during that flight should serve as a reminder to all pilots. We have to make sure that we always have a strong human component to our technological systems. The aviation experts we spoke to say most bird strikes happen between July and November when migratory traffic is high. And the FAA says about 63% of bird strikes occur during the day, usually when planes are landing. Still to come, a farm providing second chances to humans and horses. I've gotten way more out of this program than I ever thought I would. We take you to a special training program inspiring inmates to trust and love unconditionally. It's like a men's long sleeve button down shirt. Oh, but first, one person's lost luggage is another's treasure. <gasps> oh, oh my gosh, look at that. We unpack the Alabama Megastore selling forgotten stuff at a deep discount. Wow, I love this. Isn't that cool? Our in-depth coverage continues. You can get connected to Investigate TV Plus on all social media platforms. Who can forget this scene from the 2022 holiday season? Southwest Airlines passengers wading through a sea of lost luggage. Many passengers saying they waited for days to get their bags after having their flight delayed or canceled because of a winter storm and computer issues. When it comes to all major airlines, a recent U.S. Department of Transportation report found in the first half of 2022, nearly 1.5 million bags were either lost, late, or damaged. Fortunately, a majority of passengers are reunited with their bags. However, for those bags that go unclaimed, the final destination may be in Scottsboro, Alabama at the Unclaimed Baggage Center. The center buys unclaimed suitcases from major airlines in hopes of finding packed away treasures. Reporter Rachel Polanski takes us to this baggage experience. When you're at baggage claim. When I got there, uh, my luggage was not there. It's not hard to find folks who have lost their luggage. It was rough. It's kind of a little bit to be expected. While the majority of passengers, and we're talking 99 and a half percent, do get their bags back. It ended up taking four days to get our luggage back. Have you ever wondered about that other half percent? Well, those bags may end up in Scottsboro, Alabama, here at the Unclaimed Baggage Center. When millions of people are traveling every single day, that fraction of 1% really does add up to a lot of unclaimed bags. That's nice. You're looking at the contents of those bags right here at the nearly 50,000 square foot storefront, which has become a tourist attraction to more than a million shoppers each year. Oh, definitely. Just like Verla Doolin from Ohio. This is exciting. Yes. <laughs> Who agreed to open an orphan suitcase in something the company calls 
the baggage experience. Look at this. The men's long sleeve button down shirt. That looks good. Gorilla <gasps> didn't find any emeralds or rubies, which we're told has happened before. <gasps> oh my gosh, look at that. She did walk away with a nice souvenir. Wow, I love this. Isn't that cool? So how exactly does a lost suitcase make its way here? Well, the airline has 90 days to get the bag back to its rightful owner. If they don't, the Unclean Baggage Center, which has contracts with all major airlines, comes into the picture. We have truck drivers that make the trip around the country to pick up these unclaimed bags from airlines, and we bring them back here to Scottsboro, Alabama, in our operations facility, where we sort and process these suitcases. Then, each item gets sorted into one of three categories, sell, donate, or recycle. We wanted to show you that part of the process, too. But the Unclean Baggage Center wouldn't let us into their operations facility, citing proprietary reasons. And just like that secret area behind the luggage belt at the airport, there are some things we're just not allowed to see. All right, so how can you make sure that your suitcase doesn't end up in Alabama? Well, first of all, make sure that your name and contact info is on the outside and the inside. You can also throw a couple business cards in there because why not? If you're really worried, take a photo of what you're packing. And if possible, carry on. I would have a hard time opening somebody else's bag. That's I'm, not my stuff. Did you see that the memento yeah. that someone brought and just right there People's in that warehouse? Memories. And look, airlines, there's so much technology. There's that many bags that you can't find the owner? I don't know. Mm. All right, the easiest way to prevent the airline from losing your bag is, of course, to travel only with a carry-on. But sometimes you do need to take more. If your bag does get lost, check your airline's claims and compensation policy. Be sure to read the fine print. There's paperwork and documentation, but you can eventually get cash for your lost bags. The maximum liability limit allowed by DOT regulations is $3,800. And if you feel the airline isn't helpful, you can file a complaint with the U.S. Department of Transportation. It affects your jobs. It affects a lot of your future. It means a lot, because we both get a second chance. Up next, a farm inspiring redemption. These guys don't deserve, you know, to be to be left behind, and I feel like neither do we. How retired racehorses are using their second chance to help inmates turn their lives around. You can watch Investigate TV Plus anytime streaming online. Get the app for Roku, Amazon Fire TV, and Apple TV. They're free to download. We're learning compassion and trust and patience and empathy and selflessness. A horse rescue in Maryland teaches life lessons and gives second chances. The farm, located not far from a state prison, is teaching prison inmates critical job skills so they'll be ready for a new life on the outside. The inmates spend their day at the farm working and caring for retired and injured racehorses who have been given a safe haven from slaughter. Reporter Deborah Alfaron shows us how these horses are inspiring humans to make the most of their second chance too. Good girl. On this peaceful farm in the small town of Sykesville, Maryland, John Mayo is learning to take care of 20-year-old retired racehorse, Lucy. On paper, we're learning the anatomy of the horse. Um, we're learning what to look for, how the horse is thinking, how he's feeling. Not on paper, we're learning compassion and trust and patience and empathy and selflessness. All attributes John plans to use in his second chance. See, these rolling hills are a sharp contrast to the concrete and barbed wire of nearby Central Maryland Correctional Facility. That's where John's serving a sentence for a marijuana charge. All of the men who are here have some sort of a checkered past. You know, that is true, and, and they take responsibility for the reasons that they're here. This is Second Chances Farm. John and seven other inmates are learning to groom and care for horses. It's a partnership between Maryland's Department of Public Safety and Correctional Services and the Thoroughbred Retirement Foundation. They're earning a certificate that'll help them qualify for a job while saving these thoroughbreds from neglect, abuse, and slaughter. Not every inmate qualifies for this program. They can't be incarcerated for certain offenses, and they have to be at the lowest security level. And it is a high bar 
You know, this is not um, something where you can just kind of show up without studying and get a passing grade. Would you say that Mary saved your life? Definitely. Yeah, I was on a dead end road. You know, I was destined to be an old drunk. I was an alcoholic. I was destined to be an old lonely drunk. You now I've changed. You know, a lot, and I think, I think horses had a lot to do with that. Malcolm Cox says he's learned a lot of lessons, but some of the most impactful, he's learned directly from 19-year-old Mary Wins, or Mary for short. The horses uh, can read your emotions. You know, they actually teach you how to work on your anger issues, you know, how to have confidence, how not to be selfish. I've gotten way more out of this program than I ever thought I would. Then Malcolm and Mary taught me a lesson. So if you're nervous and afraid, they feel the same way. If you're confident, and if you move around them with a purpose, you know, they just fall right in line. The goal is to put them in the best position possible to return as full citizens, to be able to be good neighbors, you know, to be an active part of their community and, and not, you know, set aside as something less, as something less than. The Biden administration estimates more than 60% of people leaving prison are unemployed a year later. This program tilts these men towards success and not statistics. It affects your jobs. It affects a lot of your future. It means a lot because we both get a second chance. These guys don't. These guys don't deserve, you know, to be to be left behind. And I feel like neither do we. Sounds like coming here gives you hope. It does. It does. And maybe a new direction. And that's it for us on Investigate TV Plus. I'm Tisha Powell. And I'm Lee Zurich. Thanks for watching. On the next Investigate TV Plus, experts agree it's dangerous to hold a baby on your lap during a flight. The fact that they allow it gives people the assumption that it's safe. We explore why federal regulators have not changed the rules despite reports of more turbulent skies.